Alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu صلوات الله والسلام عليه أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلوات الله والسلام عليه وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. And what was collected by Al Imam Al Bukhari Muslim is an incident that was mentioned in detail. In the Quran as well, something we want to deal with here today, bi'ithnillah, and it's just a small aspect, a small part of this seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam is connected to our iman billahi, is connected to our iman, the books, especially the Quran, is connected to our iman in the prophets and the messengers, especially the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's an extremely long hadith, so we're only going to deal with a small aspect of it, kind of the middle of the hadith, not the beginning and not the end. And the vast majority of Muslims who are here, I'm sure, inshallah, have heard of this hadith. But it deserves that we mention it and that we study it today, as well as next Saturday, inshallah, some aspects of this hadith are going to be dealt with when we do be in Ilah on Saturday the class about the Muslim family. It is the famous hadith of what is known as Qissatul Ifq, the story of the great slander of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha wa ardaha. And this hadith and this incident was an incident that shook the Muslim community to its very core. And even today, concerning Syria, concerning Yemen, what we see taking place in Syria and Yemen, where the Rafida of Iran have a lot to do with the murders that are taking place in Syria because they supply the oppressive Syrian regime with weapons. The Rafida from the Houthiyun in Al Yemen, who have been killing people of the Sunnah for over two months right now, the dunya doesn't say anything about it. This story helps us to form our opinion concerning those people. Our mother Aisha radiallahu anha was traveling with the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she lost her necklace and she was inadvertently and mistakenly left in the desert by herself. One of the companions came by the name of Safwan ibn Mu'attal radiallahu anhu and he picked her up and he brought into Al Medina in broad daylight. When the people of the community, the munafiqun, the hypocrites, when they saw her coming into the city in broad daylight with another man, it was something that wasn't ordinary. It's out of the ordinary. Instead of saying something must have happened to cause this problem, they said she must be having an affair. These two are doing something between themselves, some fahisha. Aisha radiallahu anha said, when she arrived in Al-Medina after that trip that she was on with the Nabi Sallallahu she became sick. And for 30 days she was sick. For a whole month she was sick. She didn't hear the news of the people talking about this issue that she had an affair. She didn't hear it. Which will give the Muslim girl in our community an understanding that the people who used to enter upon Aisha were not people who were given to Qila wa Qal. Maybe the people talked amongst themselves but being that she was from the awliya of Allah, you can rest assured that the people who came to visit her, they're not the type of people who have a lot of kalam about what he said, she said, he did, they did. They were people of a taqwa. But the munafiqeen in the city, they were saying things. And a few of the Muslims, when they heard that story, they began to say things to one another. 
spreading the story, spreading the news. For 30 days, she didn't know what was going on. She said, but I thought there was something wrong. I was suspicious because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for that 30-day period, every day that he would come to me, all he would say to me was, Kum. How are you? What's up? That's it. This is the man, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who, to him, Aisha was his Habiba, by the meaning of the word. His mahbuba by the meaning of the word. She was the most beloved individual to him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If he was questioned who you love the most, he said, I love that lady more than everybody else from amongst you people. She was the one due to her young age, like any other woman, sometimes she was a bit temperamental. If she became upset and angry at her husband for something, he would never, never, ever repay her anger with anger. He used to make her laugh at the time when she became upset and angry. He understood her disposition. Now you show me a man in this masjid who when his wife gets angry with him, he doesn't give her some drama back. He doesn't say, hey, you better get yourself in, 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 in position and, 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 and calm down. Whenever she got angry, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam managed the problem. Not because he was under her thumb. But because he was as Allah Ta'ala mentioned This was the man Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ikhwani who If a regular Muslim was sick He gave us a lot of a hadith How to deal with the sick from amongst us What to give them and what not to give them How to visit them, how not to visit them Many a hadith tell us The adab of dealing with someone who's married in your house now here the sick person is the most beloved person to him in the world and all he says to her is Kefatikum, are you doing? She said, I thought something was wrong. She said, one day after that 30 day period, I went to answer the call of the nature with one of my companions, relative of mine. And that relative, her son Musti was one of the companions anhu, who was talking about this thing. His mother almost tripped over her jilbab and the mother said, may mustih be destroyed. Aisha said, do you say that about a man who participated in the battle of Badr? She said, didn't you hear what he said? Didn't you hear the news? She said, no. And then the lady told Aisha about what the community was saying. She couldn't believe it. 30 days, she was the topic of the discussion of the community and what they were saying was something that was serious. As Allah mentioned, You people think it's a small thing, but it's big with Allah. That thing is big with Allah. She couldn't believe it. She went back home for 30 days. The Nabi never mentioned to her this issue. Her mother or father never mentioned to her this issue. And now she waits for the Prophet to come. He comes after, she hears the news, and he says to her, Kefatikum, how you doing? She said, that's it, can't take any more. Ya Rasulullah, would you allow me to go to my mother's house? Would you allow me to go to my father's house? She said, I became more sick than I was sick in those 30 day period. Now, Khwani the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, yes, go to your parents' house. And that's a proof and an indication for some of us to understand the girl that has been raised up in the house that has shut up and love and warmth and support. She's been raised up in that house. When she has a problem and she has a misunderstanding with her husband and she wants to go back to the house to be defended and surrounded by those who love her, the husband has to understand that. He can't say to her, you're a baby, you're a spoiled brat. He has to understand it. Especially if the people in her house, her father, her mother, her brothers, are people of the deen. People are gonna calm the situation down. The Nabi said, go, go to your parents' house. She got in her mother's house and she said, Ummi, what is it that I'm hearing that the people are saying? Is it true? Instead of saying yes, the mother said to the girl, Ya Bunaya, hey, my little daughter, Hawwani, ala nafsik, take it easy on yourself. Faqallama kanat imra'atun radi'atan mithluki, wa kanat laha adrar, illa akthirna alayha. Hey, take it easy, my young daughter, take it easy. There was never a lady who was as beautiful as you. Our mother Aisha was a beautiful one. The Nabi used to call her Al-Humaira. 
because of her beauty, her white skin, her complexion, not that white in itself is inherently beautiful and black is not beautiful. But he used to call her Al-Humayra because from her characteristics was Al-Jamal. Her mother said, hey, very seldom will you find a woman who looks as attractive as you are and she has co-wives, except that those co-wives are going to talk a lot. So if you don't handle this situation, they're going to talk, your co-wives. So the mother gave her knowledge, tarbiyah, gave her some knowledge, take it easy. Aisha couldn't believe it. She said, subhanAllah. So it is true. Some lady from the Ansar came, knocked on the door. They allowed her in. She came and she sat with Aisha. Abu Bakr Sadiq, her father, came and sat with her. Her mother, Umm Ruman, sat with her. She said, I cried all that day and all that night to the point where I thought my kidney, I thought my liver was going to stop, malfunction. She said, I couldn't sleep all night. And that Ansar lady was crying with me. My mother was crying with me. And my father was crying with me. Serious indication that the real believer, his friends, her friends, they stand next to the person and they stand by the person. They don't have shamata. Shamata is when something happens to someone, we practically want to stand up and applaud and whistle. We want to have a party because something happened to someone. The Nabi says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Method al Mu'minin fi tawadihim. The Muslim community is like a single individual body and their love for one another and their rahmah towards one another and their emotions towards one another. What he feels, you feel. Happy, happy. Sad, sad. Disturbed, disturbed. Go to the internet and look at the Syrian girl who nothing happened to her. Nothing happened to her. But she was outside when the bomb blew up and the implosion in her head and how she was in shock. Look at the Syrian man who he lost his son. He thought his son was gone. When they brought his son back to him and he saw his son, the man could not believe his eyes. It's a murjiza to him. The Muslim person sees that. He cries. He says, if that was me, I would deal with the same thing. I would, I would react the same way. The point is, don't be of those people who clap and applaud when our relatives, our brothers, our sisters, some misfortune happens. She said, I stayed in that condition all day. And then the next day, the Nabi came. Now keep in mind, Ummah till Islam. For over 30 days, the Nabi didn't speak to her with other than the words, Kayfatikum, what's up? That's it. He came and he sat down. And he said, he started giving what appeared to be a khutbah and it was only four people there. The shahada. Amma ba. Hey Aisha. I've been told news has come to me concerning you. I heard this, I heard that. It's hearsay, but I heard it. Now I'm going to tell you Aisha. If you are innocent and you didn't do it. If. Then Allah will exonerate you. And Allah will prove your innocence. But Aisha. If you did this thing. If you did it. You fell in it. You touched it. It touched you then I'm telling you to seek istighfar from Allah. Ask Allah to forgive you and make tawbah. And then he said, Ummat al-Islam, inna al-abda idha tarafa wa taba taba Allahu alayhi. If the slave makes a sin and he confesses and acknowledges and makes tawbah, Allah will forgive him. Now we have to stop here. A lot has to be said about this hadith and there's not a lot of time. Next Saturday we'll give more inshallah. But he said to his wife, hey, Acknowledge what you did if you did it. Confess in front of the people in public right here. And we all know that in our religion, everybody here is making sins without any exception. Look in front of you, behind you, right or left. Everybody here and outside of this place. But the sins that we commit, you should be quiet about those sins. And you shouldn't go and broadcast those sins. 
He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sahih Muslim, on the authority of Nu'man ibn Bashir, radiyallahu anhuma wa ardahuma, kullu ummati ma'afa illa al-mujahirin, wa inna min al-mujahira, an ya'mal al-raju amalan bil-layl, fa yasturuhu Allahu ta'ala, fa yusbihu, fa yadhab, wa yaku, ya fulan, inni amaltu al-bariha kada wa kada, yakshifu sitru Allah anhu, all of my ummah will be in a good condition. They'll be forgiven. All of them will be forgiven. Except the ones who broadcast. Ya Rasulullah was broadcasting. He said broadcasting is the one. He does a sin. A man, he does something in the nighttime. Allah covers it. He doesn't let people know what he did in the nighttime. But the man wakes up and he goes say, Hey, I did this, I did that, I did that. And he starts telling people. And when he does that, he makes the sin small in the eyes of the people. But then he said he broke... The covering of Allah after Allah covered him. Why would the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa tell Aisha, confess? But he told us, don't confess your sins. The wisdom for that, Ikhwani, is it is not permissible for a Nabi, any Nabi. It's not permissible for the Sayyid of Bani Adam, the Khatim of the Anbiya and the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's not permissible for him to stay with a woman who committed Fahisha. It's not permissible. He can't do it. So you have to confess if you did that. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ الرِّجْسِ أَهْلِ الْبَيْتِ وَيُتَهِّرُكُمْ تَطْهِرًا Allah wants to purify you people from Ahl al-Bayt. That ayah was revealed before this incident. So Allah wants Ahl al-Bayt, his wives, to be pure. And he's going to allow her to make zina. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Tahreem Darab Allah mathalan lilladheena amanu mraatan nuhin wa mraatu lut kanata tahta abdaini min ibadina salihain fa khanita huma fa lam yukhniya an huma min Allahi shay'a wa qila udkhul al-nar ma'a al-dakhilin Allah gives you an example of those who disbelieve for the disbelievers the wife of Nuh, the wife of Lot, the two prophets in Islam, messengers in Islam. They had two husbands who were from our righteous servants, both of them. And both of those women, they made khiana to their husbands. And their position with their husband didn't help them with a lot. Oh, they're going to the hellfire. It's going to be said to them, go into the hellfire, you two women. The khiana in this ayat is that they tried to trick their husbands in the deen. They were with the kuffar against the people of Islam. It wasn't zina. It wasn't zina. So the point here is, Aisha radiallahu anha, if she did it, she has to confess. After hearing those words from the Nabi, first words in 30 days. After hearing those words. First words that came out of his mouth. First discussion. And you all know that the prophet was wise. What came out of his mouth was always the best thing at that time that needed to be said. So it's always full with wisdom. Always. From the wisdom of what he said. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ikhwani goes to show Rasulullah concerning his own person. He would not put himself forward until the Dalil came down. And he's the Nabi of Al-Islam. Who are you and who am I? This was about himself. But there's no Dalil from the Quran. Allah didn't reveal. So he doesn't put his own foot forward concerning his own self. And then we have every day the people put themselves forward. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam ikhwani for those of us our relatives Sufis, Brawis when will we learn? When will we learn? If Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was hazir nazir he would have never said that statement to Aisha. He would have known because he was there. He would have witnessed it. He would have stopped it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we go back to our relatives and we say, Hey, cut out this Hazir Nasir nonsense. Because look what happened next. Hazir Nasir. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam finished his kalam. Aisha was flabbergasted. What? These are the first words that I hear? She couldn't speak. She looked at her father. Radiallahu anhu. She said, Ajib anni Rasulullah. Ya Abi, answer on my behalf. What do you have to say? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, who was crying, said, Wallahi, la adri ma kul li Rasulullah. I don't know what I'm going to say. She looked at her mother. Ummi, 
Ajibi anni Rasulullah. Answer on my behalf. The mother said the same thing as Abu Bakr. Wallahi, I don't know what I'm going to say. What I'm going to say. They have husnadhan for their daughter. Hey, Ikhwani, everybody sitting here, I go down each this line and I ask each and every one of you. My wife is in this masjid right now. I know, inshallah, someone tried to approach my wife. My wife is going to tell me, inshallah. No human being is going to approach her. She's going to come and say to me, hey, he did this. Even if she thought there's going to be a fitna, she's not going to let something like that go by. Do you think Abu Bakr is not more than me in that? More than you in that? But why didn't he say something? And why didn't his wife say something? Because they saw the Nabi himself not putting himself before the Quran. Not putting himself before what Allah revealed. So how in the world are they going to allow themselves to go before? How? 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 Allah described Abu Bakr and his wife and described the true believers. That's the deen that they were on. So they didn't talk. Ya ikhwani, ikhwani. Hazir nazir. Abu Bakr and his wife would never say some nonsense like that because it's not in the Quran, it's not in the Sunnah. No revelation. Before the Muslim believes something in his aqidah, have delil. Before he talks about takfir, have delil. Before he talks about jihad here, jihad there, have delil. Tabdi here and there, have some delil about this religion. They didn't say anything. When they didn't say anything, Aisha said about herself, radiallahu anha, faqala saddam'i. When I saw that my husband said that, my father didn't say anything, my mother didn't say anything, my eyes stopped shedding tears. To the point I didn't even cry anymore. It just stopped just like that. Because an individual who's crying and crying and crying, when they get angry, when they get angry from the rahmah of Allah, that's how he created Bani Adam, the nafs is like that. Now she became angry for Allah. For the hop, for herself, she stopped crying. She sat up in the bed where she had been in a fetal position. She sat up in the bed. She said, I know that these words that you people heard has found a place in your hearts. I know it. And if I were to tell you that I'm innocent and Allah knows that I'm innocent, you are not going to believe me. And if I were to tell you that I did it and Allah knows that I didn't do it, then you're going to believe me. She said, but wallahi, I don't have anything to say except what Abu Yusuf said. Abu Yusuf. She said, because I was so young at that time, and because of the fitna, what was happening, I couldn't even remember his name. Who is Abu Yusuf? Abu Yusuf is Yaqub in the Quran. Allah never named him by his kunya. No hadith, you're going to find a hadith. Where the Nabi told the people, Yusuf's father's kunya is Abu Yusuf, although it's known. But because she was distracted, because she was going through what she was going through, she said, I couldn't remember his name, so I called them Abu Yusuf. And then she read the statements of Yaqub. For sabrun jameel, wallahu musta'an, ala ma tasifu. I'm going to have beautiful patience in what you people are saying. And Allah is the one who's going to help me. Allah is the one who's going to help me. And here, Ikhwani, especially for you women here, here shows the quwwat al-iman of Aisha. The strength of character. Being married to the Nabi. Being the daughter of Abu Bakr and Umr Man. Being from the companions. The strength of character. First of all, she goes to the Quran for strength. She goes to the Book of Allah. Who am I if Abu Yusuf Yaqub Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi He dealt with a situation he said similar Who am I? She took strength from the Quran She knew the book of Allah Allah Ta'ala mentioned Inna Allah yudafi an ladhina amanu Allah will protect those who believe Alayhi sallahu bikaf abdi Isn't Allah enough to protect his slave? Those are ayahs from the Quran And those ayahs they're applicable to you and you and you and you and me. Allah will protect those who believe. Any ordinary, I'm a Bakr Zaid, Allah is going to protect them. 
What about the wife of the Nabi? She said those ayat, Ikhwani, and for our Hazim, Nazir people, people who want Ruqya, you got to go to the Sheikh for Ruqya. The individual who's always asking, asking, making dua to Allah. She said, Allahul Musta'an. This is a tremendous dua for the believer. She didn't say, Rasulullah Musta'an. Rasulullah is her husband who's saying something she doesn't like. He's from the makhlukat. Father, wali from the awliya of Allah. Nonetheless, he's from the makhlukat. Her mother, same thing. She said, Allah Musta'an. Allah is the help. No one else can help me in this situation. In Kitab al-Tawheed, Sheikh al-Islam Muhammad Abdul Wahab, in the chapter of seeking assistance from other than Allah, shirkun, some munafiq, he brought the narration, the munafiq is talking, talking, talking. Her father Abu Bakr said to the companions, hey, come with me to the Nabi so that we can get istiana. He can help us against the munafiq. They went to the Nabi according to the hadith. The Nabi said to Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, innahu yustaghathu billah, you only seek help from Allah. That's Aisha. Al-Tawheed. Al-Aqidah. She said, that was it. I laid back on my bed. And I turned over. This didn't face them. I put the cover over my head. And I knew that Allah was going to free me. She said, and then suddenly, we heard some noise. No one left the house. No one stood up. And the Nabi, he started sweating. And he started sweating like, pearls and it was the winter time now i'm sweating here because i'm talking and his lights are here and you people have sucked up the atmosphere so it's hot he was sweating and he wasn't doing anything that was the impact of the wahi that's the impact of the quran on him after the ayat came down from the beginning of surah to nur 19 ayat when it was finished the nabi laughed and he said, Ya Aisha, Abshari, be happy, Aisha. Allah has exonerated you. Allah has proven your innocence. He read the ayat. Her mother and the father obviously were overjoyed, overwhelmed. The father said, Stand up to the Nabi. Go to the Nabi, to your husband. This is a joyous occasion. Go to your husband. Thank him, praise him. She said, La wallahi, la uqumu ilahi, wa la ahmidu illa Allah. I'm not going to stand up to him. I'm not going to stand up to him. I only worship Allah and I only praise Allah for what happened. That wasn't Aisha disrespecting the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And who told you she didn't stand up to him the next day or the next day? And they became close again. He is her Habib. But Allah is more Habib than Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's our deen. Person swears by Allah and he lies. Swears by the Nabi and he doesn't lie. You want him to tell the truth? Tell him to say one nebi and he won't swear. He's telling the truth. Another issue, Ikhwani, before we finish here. Our nebi, he had husn al Don't sit there and think, hey, hey, is this story saying that the prophet, he, he thought she did it? No. I didn't mention from the story that before he went to Aisha's house, he stood on the mimbar and he said to the Muslims who were hearing this, he said, man, you're verani fi rajulin. Adhani fi ahli, which one of you will help me against a man? The Munafiq Abdullah ibn Sulul ibn Ubay, who's saying all of that nonsense. Who will help me? Because I'm going to deal with that guy. I'm going to deal with him. Who wants to help me? Because he has harmed my family, and I don't know anything but good about my family. He said he also harmed an innocent man, Safwan ibn Muattal, and that man was good. He never came into my house except that I was with him. So that's a clear proof that the Nabi had husn al But he didn't know. He didn't know for sure. Ikhwani, when people ask you to write a tazki, a reference, or to say something good about someone or someone else, he wants to marry your friend's daughter, and your friend comes and says, what do you know about him, a sheikh, Abu Muhammad? What do you know about that kid? You should say, he's a nice brother, he's practicing, I think he's a good... Wala uzakki ala ahada. But Allah knows best. Allah alam bi saririhi. Allah knows best what his secrets are. You have a good opinion? Anybody can do anything. Anybody other than the prophets and the messengers can do anything. So if you pray someone, saying Allah knows best, Allah knows his secrets. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nas'ala Allah ta'ala al-azim al-jaleel. 
أن يوفقنا وإياكم بما يحب ويرضى الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله إخواني living in Europe in the UK we have to tread very carefully about what we say although our religion is clear we have a thing in our religion called al-wala wal-bara allegiance and enmity and animosity if I stood up here and I gave a khutbah about the filth and the nastiness of the rafida of Iran and I'm not against Iran because of nuclear weapons. I'm not against them because the West and the media. And I'm not against them for that. I'm not against them for that. I support any Muslim country being able to defend itself and its sovereignty. I'm against Iran for many reasons. One of them is this khutbah. Someone comes and says you're pre preaching hatred. Hatred. Wallahi, I tell you, if someone said that about my mother who gave birth to me, it's a problem. So I say, yes, yes, yes. I hate the statement of people who say things like that about the most beloved and favorite wife of the Khatim of the NBA and the Rusul. And everyone here has to take a position in your religion. Syria is a problem. Syria is a problem. Kafir over the Muslims, killing the Muslims. And those who are fighting them, the so-called rebels, I don't support all of them. Because some of them are pan-Arabists. Some of them are criminals themselves. Some of them are a problem. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. And that's the whole point. One of the reasons why we're against the Syrian regime is that they receive help from Iran who it is their religion to believe that Aisha committed Fahisha. And the ayahs are clear. The story is clear. In Yemen, as I said, the Houthi Yod are killing the people of the Sunnah in a damage. And one of the reasons why we have a problem with that, one of the many reasons, is what they say about the wife of the Nabi. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu anhum ajma'in. Ummat al-Islam, awa aqida, awa aqida. Let us learn our religion, learn how to take positions, learn who to be for and who to be against, and not be of the people who are emotional. May Allah Ta'ala put us in the Jannah Til Firdaus with Aisha. May Allah Ta'ala allow all of us to see her face one day smiling at us as people who defended her. May Allah Azza make our daughters and wives on the way in the path of Aisha. Because by the Lord of the Kaaba, she's from the Sayyidat of Ahl al Jannah and she's from the best of Adam's children, bar none, bar none. She's from the best. Those who are better than her, the Anbiya and the Rasul. As for the men, she has passed many of the men. Not a single man in this masjid is better than Aisha. Not a single man here. May Allah make it easy for us. Atamu salat yarhamakumullah. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاة حيا للفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر والله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى تدر التراس ولا تختلف فتختلف قلوبكم وسد الخلل إن تسوية الصف من إقام الصلاة لا تسوون صفوفكم أو يخالفن الله بين قلوبكم لينوا بين أيدي أخوانكم everyone look to your right look to your left make sure your hills look to your right look to your left make sure your hills are equal and even with both of your companions sisters sisters we need to get on the program with this issue about the صفوف some lady up there take responsibility for those roles don't leave any children between two people who doesn't have wudu, doesn't know what he's doing. Stow, I tell you what to 
لا تترك الفروجات للشيطان لا تسابقوني don't race me in the movements look at the people in the first row and move when you see them moving Allahu Akbar Subhanak الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تسلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من دريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيؤذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سبحان رب العظيم وبحمده سبحان رب العظيم وبحمده سبحان رب العظيم قدوس رب الملائكة والروح سمي الله لمن حمده اللهم ربنا لك حمد كثيرا طيبا الله أكبر الله أكبر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يستر الناس أشتاة ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الله أكبر
سب قدس رب الملائكة سمع الله لمن حمد بلا بكى طيبة مباركة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام علينا وعلى إباد الله صالح أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد بارك على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم اللهم عين على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادك اللهم إني ظلمت نفسي ظلما كثيرا ولا يغفر ذنوب إلا أنت تغفر لي مغفرة لي وارحمني أنك أنت غفور اللهم إني أعوذ بك من ذاب جهنم ومن ذاب القبر من فئن الأحياء والممات ومن شر فئن الزين الجهنم السلام عليكم إخواني we want to uh, request from all of you إن شاء الله عز وجل to donate generously to the masjid for the ongoing issues so please try not to leave without helping the efforts here at the mischief. So for those of you who can give a lot, we ask you by Allah to give a lot. And those of you who can give what you can, then barakallah fikum. Uh, we have a visitor here. His name is uh, Naveed Aziz. He's there in, uh, from Canada. I think many of you brothers know him. And uh, I think he's going to come and say a few words like after everyone gets out of the masjid so we don't stop people from getting back to, the, to their jobs. So Naveed, fatal. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ما بعد. ما جي بس إن سيستر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. You know, a lot of times if there's an announcement after Juma, people might assume that they're here to do a fundraiser. I'm giving you the glad tidings. I'm not doing a fundraiser. I actually didn't even know that Abu Sama knew that I was here. Subhanallah. Uh, so he kind of put me on the spot to share some words. But I'll share one beautiful hadith with you that I've been thinking about for a long time. And this was the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when Mu'adh ibn Jabal was leaving towards Yemen. And Mu'adh didn't know if he would come back and see the Messenger of Allah ﷺ again after that time. So this was the farewell advice that he gave him. And perhaps some of the most significant advice Mu'adh had received from the Messenger of Allah. And he told Mu'adh three simple things. He told him, fear Allah wherever you are. Follow up a bad deed with a good one and it will wipe it out and treat the people with the best of manners. And when I think about living Islam in the West, you know, throughout all of the struggles that we will go through, sometimes we get so engulfed by more complex and technical issues that we forget about the basics. So here the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes Islam very, very easy and very basic. And this is the Islam that we need to go back to. That before we get into the more complex matters, let us go back to the very simple issues of having taqwa of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Every time we do a bad deed, seek Allah's forgiveness and follow it up with a good deed and it will wipe it out. And here's the important one, treating people with the best of manners. In our day and age, this is something that is overlooked. Each and every person lives for themselves, works for themselves, spends on themselves. But this was not the characteristics that Islam brought. So we need to be more considerate of each other. We need to be more involved in each other's lives in terms of what type of khair we bring to one another. 
The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that we won't truly believe till we love for one another what we love for our own selves. So try to make this day a day where at least you do one good deed for one of your brothers, bidillahi ta'ala, without him even asking for it. Perhaps buy him a gift, treat him out to lunch, you know, just do something nice, even if it's just a smile in his face, purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects and blesses this beautiful community of Birmingham and it's always nice to be back. Jazakum Allah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Just a few announcements. This Saturday's lecture is entitled The Gift of Life and will be delivered by Abu Abdullah Abbas from Bradford, inshallah. Tonight's postal lecture is entitled Pre-Islamic Traditions Practiced by Muslims by Ustad Najibullah. As you may already be aware, a member of our congregation has passed away in a car accident. The family are trying to arrange the funeral as soon as possible, but it will not be today. We will keep you posted, inshallah. Please make the wa. Once again, please donate generously on your way out. Zakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum. I'm trying. Good to see you, man. It's good to see you too, man. How's your folks doing? Everybody is great, great. Wake up twice, man. What's happening? Hey, sit down. I'm going to wrap to you. I'm drinking. How are you? Come and try. Come and drink. Yeah, he said, come and eat some food today. Hey, what were you sitting in the chair, sir? Yeah, I'll come. Me too, man. I've been late, man. I've been working at the butcher shop, bro. Are you serious? I'm in the cold box all day long. I'm in the cold box all day long. All day, huh? How you been? I'm in the cold box. You lying? Good, good. Good to see you. Likewise.